And welcome back to another segment on our Network of the Future channel leading up to TIA's Network of the Future Conference 2014. That's on June 3rd through 5th. We're talking today with Tom Straup. He's the CEO of SSC. That's the Shared Spectrum Company. They're an innovator in dynamic spectrum access and cognitive radio and technology software solutions. And Tom, welcome to the program. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks for being here. Of course, we're going to be talking about Spectrum and the impending Spectrum auctions coming up. I want to start by talking about, or asking you uh, rather, about the current climate of the Spectrum community. What's your take on that? I'd like to start by noting that there are lots of different users of Spectrum. So there's probably not a consensus opinion within the community. So if you're a um, user of baby monitors or manufacturer of baby monitors, you have a different perspective than broadcasters or the cellular industry. But I think that one thing is important is to note that um, the use of spectrum on a shared basis is, is increasingly recognized as important. And just going back 10 years ago, if you were a cellular carrier, you probably viewed Wi-Fi as potential competitive to your business. Now it's an opportunity to be able to offload some of the, uh, the demand that is, is creating this, this huge impact on the networks. And within the military, I think there's a recognition that there is going to be sharing of spectrum with commercial users. So there's definitely a sea change that's taking place driven by the huge demand for Spectrum and the time that it takes to reallocate from one user to the next. So you think that the impending Spectrum auctions are forcing the community to collaborate and converge in a way that they haven't done before? I think that they've had a need to, to cooperate before, but I think that they see that if they don't if they don't do so, they're going to be winners and losers in the process. And we do a lot of work with the defense community. Traditionally, their approach has been we're not giving up any of the spectrum that we've got. Now there's a government policy that mandates that government users share their spectrum, and it's being done on a band by band basis. So I don't think it's necessarily the auctions that are driving this as much as a change in spectrum policy. Tom, I know there are a lot of nuances to the, the whole topic under or about spectrum sharing. Uh, there's a lot of stakeholders involved. But what are the biggest, I guess, primary and general challenges behind spectrum sharing? Yeah, so I think that one of the big challenges is the paradigm shift. I mean, traditionally, we've allocated spectrum in discrete channels or discrete groupings, and the users have had exclusive use of that. Um, this is forcing companies to look at how they do things differently, and that's always a challenge. The technology has existed, and there has been spectrum sharing going on for some time. Um, cellular is a form of spectrum sharing. It's reuse within a geographic area. Wi-Fi is a form, a form of spectrum sharing. Bluetooth is. Um, so what is a real change is uh, sharing across disparate users. So DOD sharing with the cellular industry or any of the different users that are going to end up sharing spectrum, that's more innovative. And people want to see how the technology works on a band-by-band -band basis. So let's say your public safety, the fact that this technology has worked uh, within the defense community is interesting, but you want to make sure that you're not going to be subject to interference if DOD or the cellular industry or someone else is sharing your bands. Tom, if you can look through your spectrum lens per se, w the network of the future would look like what to you? I think that, again, be probably because of our focus on, on uh, spectrum sharing technologies, that's going to be one of the big changes. We'll continue to see evolutions in, uh, in, in efficiency, things like LTE and the next generation of LTE. Uh, we'll continue to see those changes. I think that we'll see more sharing of, of networks and sharing of, of frequency bands. I think that's going to be one of the big changes that takes place over the next 10 years. Would you say there is a, um, a doomsday scenario, if you will, and you don't have to answer this question, but if, would there be a doomsday scenario if the spectrum auctions don't go according to plan, if broadcasters just don't show up? I, don't, I, I think that what it means is that spectrum band is just not going to be widely deployed for uh, cellular applications. I think that they'll continue to be TV white space uh, applications used within that sharing with the broadcasters. Uh, but uh, the, the industry is already, the cellular industry is already looking at additional frequency bands on which it can operate. Uh, one is a 1755 to 1850 band, which is part of a, a worldwide allocation for mobile broadband purposes. So um, I think that there will be more of a focus um, on, on that frequency band and working towards identifying additional frequency bands beyond the 600 megahertz spectrum. Tom, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.